Hello and welcome back to FPV Reviews. In this tech episode, we will discuss how to protect the Pixhawk from voltage fluctuations that can be present on the servo rail and how to make sure its processor and sensors have a reliable backup power supply in case the regulator inside the current sensor fails. This may apply equally to some other flight controllers, but for now, we're focusing on Pixhawk as it supports Arduplane. So why does the servo rail need protection? First, the most vital reason. The Pixhawk does not get its primary power from the servo rail, but in the event of a failure of the current sensor, many Pixhawk labeled flight controllers will draw from it as a backup. We usually use a BEC, or 5 volt switching voltage regulator, such as the Castle 10 amp BEC, from Castle Creations to power the servo rail. Some people use the BEC that's built into the ESC, or electric motor controller. This is not the best way, as a failure of the ESC will not only cause the motor it's controlling to lose power, but even worse, cause the aircraft servos and other electronics using its 5 volt supply to go dead. Additionally, these integrated BECs tend to have a very low amp rating. An aircraft without propulsion is bad enough, but one with dead servos for the flight control surfaces is much less likely to survive the incident intact and more dangerous to people on the ground. In many cases, multi-engine electrics can make it back and land safely with only one motor working when they have an ESC malfunction. If that ESC's BEC was powering the servo rail when it failed, there would be virtually no chance. So, use a good quality separate BEC and supplement that power with this power filter that we will make ourselves. Now, this is described in the documentation on the ArduPilot website, as well as the other info that we're presenting here today, but it is not shown or explained very well there. As with much of the documentation on the site, it can cause a lot of confusion. If the Pixhawk does need the power from the servo rail, as we just discussed, it is very picky. It will not be able to use the power if it is not exactly 5 volts. Anything over 5.7 volts and components inside the Pixhawk may be damaged or not function. Under 4.5 volts, and it will not work. Even a voltage fluctuation of a small fraction of a second, up or down, may cause problems. The second reason why we want a good, stable 5-volt supply for the Pixhawk servo rail is to power our many devices, including the servos themselves, as well as externally powered action cameras, which would otherwise depend on their own internal battery. Some FPV cameras and many new cameras such as the Runcam Thumb and Rumcan and Runcam Thumb Pro 4K which do not have their own battery but do specifically require a 5 volt input some of these cameras will either not charge their internal battery or shut down if they don't get exactly 5 volts to make the this power filter, it's relatively quick and easy. We will need just a couple of components. The first one is fairly common and can usually be sourced from a local electronics supply store. It's a 10 volt, 1000 microfarad rated electrolytic capacitor. You do not need a low AESR capacitor for this job, such as the type used for conditioning ESC power cables. The other component we'll be needing is a bit harder to find, and you're probably going to have to order it from the web. It can be identified as an IN5339B Zener diode. You will also need a servo plug, which most of us have around already. As far as tools, you'll need a soldering iron, some 6040 or similar lead solder, preferably with flux core, some 3 8 inch heat shrink, safety glasses, as well as a heat gun or other heat source such as a propane stovetop or cigarette lighter. 
Start by bending the wire back on the Zener diode. Trim it so that both lengths are approximately equal and the spacing is about the same as the capacitor. Tin the tips of the diode wires as well as the capacitor wires. You will notice that the capacitor has a ground strip, a white bar, printed on its side with some dashes, signifying the negative symbol. This is the ground side and will eventually be connected to the servo rail ground. The Zener diode also has a silver ground stripe on one end, but since the Zener diode will be opposing the capacitor and the rest of the system, it will be connected backwards with its silver stripe connected to the positive on the capacitor and the servo rail. Next, solder them together just like we talked about and as shown. One side first, then the other. Once both sides are soldered together, they will hold each other together while we add the wire, as only one will be molten at a time. Trim the signal wire flush for the servo connector. Leaving its pin in will help it stay on the servo rail plugged in tightly. Strip and tin the wires for the servo plug and solder them to the Zener diode and capacitor. Make sure there are no sharp tails from the solder and double check the normal correct polarity of the capacitor and that the Zener diode is placed in the opposite direction. Now you can cover it with a piece of heat shrink. You can test it to make sure it's safe before plugging it into the PixSock by using a BEC set to 5 volt. The Castle 10 amp BEC comes from the factory set perfectly for this job. Nevertheless, double check it with a voltmeter if you have one. Use safety goggles, because if the polarity of the capacitor is backwards, it will explode with a loud pop. You can use a servo Y connector as a tool to easily connect the BEC to the filter that you just made and also have a convenient way to measure voltage with a digital multimeter at the same time. You should measure exactly 5 volts within one-tenth of a volt. In this case, the stock Castle 10 amp BEC is within 3 one-hundredths of a volt, a near-perfect result. If you are building a fixed-wing aircraft with a PixHawk, it can be frustrating and at times confusing looking up all of the documentation on the ardupilot.org website and trying to make sense of it all. We've been through it, and we've created a step-by-step -step guide which documents everything from flashing the right firmware to the PixSock, calibrations, settings, and clear procedures to guide you all the way from the beginning of your journey, step-by-step -step with Arduplane, right through to your first auto takeoff followed by an autonomous waypoint mission. You can find this guide at our website at the link below, as well as our own advanced aircraft projects, such as Solar Dragon, a solar-powered autonomous airplane which charges its own battery as it flies. We really hope you enjoyed this tech episode. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.